are working our way through Romans 1, 2, 1 and 2. Um, and we <clears throat> took two classes to really notice the real emphasis of Romans 1 and 2 and I began that class, not last one, but the one just before that, <clears throat> with reading a bunch of the s sins and all of the junk that it says bad and all of this stuff, and and just asked everyone, do you th you know do you think this book is really down on sin? And you know the average person, that's what they get. But then we went back through and we started noticing that the Lord, beginning in, in uh, chapter 1 and verse 19, the Lord had begun to make himself known to people. This was before, before Israel. He would begun to make himself known and he began to open himself. And I think that's a, a good, I think that's a fair phrase. He began to open himself to to men, to people. And, um, and what we began to see was that man began to uh, change that image. They, they, in other words, they, they couldn't, they didn't, they wouldn't accept him in, in how he was beginning to reveal himself. And so they began to change things. And we saw that in verse 21, but when they knew God, see, and there it is, of course, verse 19, what may be known of God, all of these things are people who were knowing God. They were knowing the living God. Not this was not just a religious presentation of God to them. It was God himself opening himself that they might know him. And verse 21, because they knew God, they glorified him not as God. And then you begin to see uh, that they <clears throat> began to change things. They didn't want to know him as he is. They wanted a God that would be a certain way according to their mind and their... The, the images of their mind. Folks, this is a problem with just in general with people, you know, that we have expectations and we, have, we see things or we want to see things and we can't just find the real person. We don't even know to find the real person in, in our society. It's not even, you know, I mean, <laughs> you, you couldn't find it on Facebook if you wanted to, you know what I mean? Because it's got all of this presentation but none of their real real heart and um, <clears throat> well how much more how much more sad is that than with the Lord and then we see in verse 23 and they changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image you say well an image like creepy things and man and all this kind of stuff but the point is that they changed it into an image. And you can't do that unless you know something of God. You see what I mean? That, you know, you just make up an image, but you don't change something unless you know what it is. And so we see the beginning stages right from the start where God made us, brought us, in um, created us and then desired his deepest desire that's what Romans is spelling out and we'll, we'll continue to follow until God's ultimate goal is reached in the book of Romans <clears throat> that his desire was um, to be known to be honored as he is now you know and I know that that God is a lamb, a slain lamb. The Bible says before the foundation of the world, he was a slain lamb. 
The Bible says in the book of Revelation, over and over, it barely calls him Jesus in the book of Revelation. It calls him the Lamb, the Lamb, the Lamb, the Lamb. Okay, so you're having before time, and you're having after time, as it were, and then you have time where we know him strictly for what he does for us. We know him in the realm of, you know, we call it his goodness, but it's only good to us because it's good to us, for us. I mean, I know that's not universal, but I also know that it is almost, you know, no, no, it's, but I mean, it's out there, you know, <laughs> and um, and you begin to find the Lord, I mean, these, this is breathing through the Apostle Paul, the heart of the Lord, he's going back to the very beginning, and then men that began to know him, and then men that began to change his image, and men that would not glorify him as God, but they would glorify him as long as he was found within, you know, the realm of creepy things or, you know, what they wanted, creeping things, sorry. No, I keep slipping my tongue. <clears throat> um, and then you have uh, verse 23, and change the glory. And then you have verse 25, who exchanged the truth of God for a lie. And I mean, we're talking, you know, come on. We're talking on a, a core basis when you're talking about God at this point. You're not talking about, you know, I mean, he hadn't manifest, he hadn't shown too much, but he is trying to show himself, okay? And they're, they're changing and exchanging God out as if he's some sort of a transformer, as if he's some sort of a thing that you can just take or leave or whatever. Um, well, God is not sitting on the throne going, well, I'm God and you hack me off with your attitudes and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you. And you can read the first couple of chapters of Romans like that. And that's not it at all. And then we, we saw where it came from. We saw that sin was not the issue with God. Sin was the fruit of the root of leaving God. And it says it blatantly. Blatantly, several times, three or four different times here. And, and of course that makes sense. Put us on our own and we're trouble. We're trouble. We just are. But with him, I mean really with him. I'm not talking about, uh, well, we'll get to it here shortly. But in chapter Two, I think it is. Um, let me just make sure. Well, it's over in chapter three. And it begins to. It, it, this is. Uh, I don't want to jump that far. I don't want to go that fast. So. They, they're, what, what they are about is not him, but his, what he can do for you. And, and he clearly has a longing to be known. I mean, remember Jesus with his disciples? Who do men say that I am? You know? Well, what do you care, man? You... You're the son of God. You're, I want them to know me as I am. Some say you're a prophet. Some say Jesus didn't go, oh, that's close. It's not close. It's so far from being. Amen? It's far from being into offices. He's a, he's a prophet. He's a this. He's a that. So what does the church do? Make it all about offices and gifts and everything else. All which came out of him who first descended into death. And therefore ascended in that same glorious, beautiful spirit and gave gifts to men. 
But he says, it's a, Paul says, but it's according to the measure of the gift of Christ, not to the measure of the giftings of Christ. And we walk right over them. We just walk right over those scriptures and we claim them for some other object and some other way. And, you know, you can't say, well, that's wrong. What you're going to find in Romans, a whole bunch of this stuff, it's not wrong, it's just not him. You say, well, as long as it's right, as long as it's good, as long as it's on the tree of the knowledge of good. <laughs> there is no tree of the knowledge of good. It contains both, and it always does, and it always will have a mixture. Okay. So, you know, that's what, that's what Romans is dealing with. I mean, he's dealing, and he's going to get into the Jews next. And he's going to do the same thing. And he's going to say, I gave you the oracles by which you might know me. You, I, I would be revealed to you and everything. But then you, you made the letter out of it. And he uses that phrase several times in chapter 2 and 3. So anyway, in this situation, they changed they exchanged God, they're trading him out, they're not, and, and he's going, you know. And so that's where we got the result of um, verse 24, wherefore God also, he gave him up. He gave him up. They were his. They were his. They belonged to him, and he had to give them up. Verse 24, and then verse 26, for this cause, God gave them up unto those things. Please see that he's giving them up when they're exchanging God out for something that they want more than they want him. And then verse 28, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, he gave them over. Okay, so there you see it. Uh, verse 28, they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. God gave them over to the reprobate mind to all the things, all the things that we call sin, God calls not being in union with me. Yes. We'll prove that here in a minute with other scriptures. These, I think these are just fine personally. I think they say it pretty well. And then we drive down to chapter 2 and we hit verse 4. And we found someone that in verse 3 who judges others. And God's response to them judging others, knowing that they're in the same condition. I was talking to somebody this week. And they were telling me the broken hearted, very hard trial of the fact that you raise your kids and, you know, they get grown and they start having kids and then they're busy with their life and they don't remember you. And the hurt and the sense of rejection are many things that, that go along with that. And they asked me, you know, sort of along this line, what do you think God's attitude is towards them that do that? And I said, well, it's probably the same attitude he has for, for Christians who just pray religiously instead of call him up. They call him up, or, when they, or, or they pray. They don't even call him up. They pray. It's, a, it's more of a religious. They say, well, this is what our religion does. We don't talk to God. We pray. <laughs> you know? and, uh, and you know what I mean. I mean... Let us all pray, but I'm, I'm in, in the right. 
not a religious thing, but, but calling him up. And not just calling him up and saying, hey, you know, like a college student, you know, hey, I need some more money for college, and I gotta have this, and would you send me this, and uh, you know, I'm gonna be home for the weekend, I'm gonna leave my laundry and go out with my friends, and would you take care of all this kind of stuff? We do that with the Lord. And um, instead of calling him up, instead of saying, Father, you've taken care of me, you've done so many wonderful things, don't think I've forgotten any of it. I just want to tell you that I think you're a wonderful father. When you don't have a father, it's a lot more precious, folks. Because you see how truly fatherly he is and how, um, you know, there's just no words for him. You know, <laughs> you know words are just stupid in the face of, of our father and in the face of Jesus. But we, 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 you know, I don't mean anything negative by this, but it is that thing where we, we, just like our children, get so involved in life and everything that we, we don't go to him like that, like that, like that. So, um, and then he says to this judging spirit that's going on in verse 1 through 3, he says, or, or is it this? Or is it this? Do you despise thou the riches of his goodness and his forbearance and his long suffering? Do you despise that? Are you not aware of it? Are you unaware of the spirit of the being behind that, that you are judging, that you are changing my image, that you are changing my glory, that you are changing my truth for a lie, and you don't recognize my goodness and my forbearance and my long suffering towards you? And so we We get into um, par a partial place here. Maybe I should just see if I'm going to hit some of this later. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. All right, let's go to Romans 3. And so again, he speaks out. Now he's speaking more to the Jew and has been maybe for the whole second chapter, but certainly through uh, 26 on down. And verse 9, Romans 3, we'll read verse 9 through 11, what then? Are we better than they? No, in no way. For we have before proved both Jews and Greeks that they are all under sin. And that's, that's been the point, see, He's, that's been the point. He's trying to prove that we're all off. All of us, but none of us want to admit that, and we'll see that in just a second. Um, verse 10, as it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is 
None that seeketh after God. And then just the first half of verse 12, they are all gone out of the way. There's none righteous. There's none who are standing rightly with Jesus. We go, righteous. Oh, there's none that's, you know, we, we fall into that religious thing again, man. It's like, well, you know, I'm righteous. I've been doing good. <laughs> yeah, I've been doing good. Yeah, but you're going to not do good next week or next month, okay? You know, so there's, you know, if it's, that's the case, there's none righteous and you're going to hell. But there's something more important on his heart. There's something, there's none that standeth rightly with God. And when I say rightly, I believe, I believe that it goes along with this theme that he's been setting up in chapter 1 and 2. He's not saying there's none that always does everything right and never breaks the law. He's not interested in the law. He gave the law to, to, to cause some problems. <laughs> we'll get into that because that, that gets into chapter 4 and 3, actually. And so he's saying there's no one that stands rightly with me because they don't know me. There's no none that know me. They don't really even know me. How can you stand rightly with me if you don't know me? Know me, he says. Know me. Seek me. Seek my heart, not my hands. There's no one that understands, he, say, he says that. There's none that understands. This... It's just, when he says there is none that seeketh after God, well, what about the priests? Or, or what about the, the holy men? Or what about the, what about the little old lady in, the, you know, in her closet? Or what, how can you say that, Lord? How can you say that there's none that know you, that none that understand that we've all turned and he would answer, because there's none that really, un they don't know me. They don't understand me. They don't understand how I work. They don't understand my patterns. They don't understand. They've never even seen the ancient paths. They don't know how to live today. They're trying to be good. They're sincere. They mean well. They don't know me, but at least they're sincere. That counts for Nothing, <laughs> you know, on the level of what he's after. And it's him. He created this thing. Whatever he's after is all that's important. And we're, you know, oh, no, I'm independent. I, you know, ugh. And we look to God and we, come, we become Christians. And then we want God to make us independent. More independent, you know. I remember when I first got born again, and I was, uh, I was noticing Christians, and they were trying to be so good in this earth that they wouldn't, you know, and really just doing so well that they wouldn't need God. Does that make sense? They were trying to do so well. I don't even need him anymore. I'm doing good. You know, I don't even, I don't sin or I don't do that. Or I, you know, I've been doing really well. Oh my God, you don't even know him. You need him to have an image, an identity is what I mean. An identity. You need him for your identity. Because if you're his bride, guess what? You know, the bride of the lamb. What's that? This is the bride of Jesus. No, it ain't. It's not the bride of a guy in a robe and sandals and long hair. Speaking of, I really need to cut my hair. <laughs> Let's just take a vote. How many of you want me to cut my hair? Raise your hand. One, two, three. How many want me to leave it the same? Raise your hand. One, two, three. You know, some of you, some of you abs, some of you abstained, some of you abstained 
because I got three, four, three again. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave this side long, and I'm going to, and I'm going to, I'm going to cut this completely like a burr. Well, let, let me tell you, I'd have to, because if I cut it all off, I'll lose all my strength. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. You people are trouble. She said what? She said Okay. Skype doesn't count. I looked straight in the camera and said that, and I can just see the shock waves going through. All right. Just kidding, skype -roos. I'm just kidding you. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> um, okay, so, and then this verse 12, they, they are all gone out of the way, or they've all turned from him and from this intimate way of knowing him, knowing him as he is. They've turned from that. And, you know, and selfishness abounds in the church. It abounds. It, it may even abound in this church. I don't know. But it abounds in the church. Because, based on what? I would say, based on the fact that our primary relationship with the Lord is him doing the stuff for me. Now, if you are a church, if you are a church, if you started trying to live after giving yourself, I mean, all out giving yourself to him, they might call you a, Radical bunch of Christians. You thought I was going to say something else. Uh, a klutz. <clears throat> but Jesus wants spirit, soul, and body. We're his. He wants us, what? As slaves. No, <laughs> as his bride or as his body. And when it says, his servants you are whom you obey, like in Romans 6, or well, you ought to check that one out. It is not saying what you think. Okay, I'll be, a, I'll be a servant and obey. Just tell me what you want. That's exactly what, what caused all the trouble in Mount Sinai where they got the law. Just tell us what you want. That's what they said to God. Just look, we'll serve you. We'll do what you want. You know, you can't do what he wants apart from him. You can't. You can't do it. You can try. You can, you can look pretty good for a while, but you'll eventually fail. Just tell us what you want. And he goes, well, if we're going to do it on that basis. He starts quoting the law. That's where it came from. That's where it came from. He starts going, okay, thou shall not steal. How's that working for you? Thou shalt not, you know, he goes down the line. And that's what's caused all the trouble, as it were. You, you, you understand what I mean. Until, until Jesus came along and gave himself on a cross. So, um, being separate from him, that's, I mean, we went our own way. Now, here's the deal now. I, I'm, it's hard for me to, it's, I'm trying to describe something here. Not we're gathered in a little group around Jesus and one day we go, eh, I don't want that. It is his calling to him and we we say no to 
to, union, to, to being with him where he is at, and we go our own way. Okay? But it's, but it's not just, I'm going to go sin. Go my own way. Was, was sin involved? Yeah, it was involved. But it was the fruit of going their own way. Because if you were joined to him, his fruit would come through you and it would bring forth and it would bring glory to the Father by Christ Jesus in the church. That's what the scriptures say. Not just, let's bring glory to God. Ready? You know, I mean, I, I think we can do better than that, personally. <laughs> I think we can do better than just raising our hands. I, when we have worship service, please raise your hands if the Lord leads. I'm not putting down that. I'm trying to say that union with him is God's answer for you and I. You, Jesus said, you are the Christian, and I'm the Christian leader. Didn't he say that? Was that Romans? I mean, John 15. Yeah, John 15. Ah, uh, you are the Christian, and I am the Christian leader. Bring forth fruit the best you can. No. No, he said, I'm the vine and you're the branch. What does that mean? It means start acting like a branch instead of a Christian. Uh, most of you have been around me long enough to know what I mean by that. I don't think you can act like a Christian without being a branch. You, I mean, you can act like it. <laughs> so, sorry, I guess you can. You can act like it. But you cannot be what he wants you to be without being a branch because there is the fruit. And then that's the other thing is, you know, the, the bride and there is the seed. And the seed in her is another angle of the same thing. The branch and the um, connected to the vine brings forth fruit. And he wants that. But him connected to the bride brings forth life. 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 You know, and fruit, yes, fruit comes as a result of life. But life is the thing that he's also after. So, so, it's, not, so it's not just about a seminar on how to be fruitful. I mean, I've, you know, and, you know, I get in trouble for all kinds of stuff. So you notice... I don't hold back very often. Just <laughs> take a number and put your name on the list, you know. But, but uh, I don't know if I want to. Well, I've already said it before, so I don't know if I want to just keep saying it, so I won't. Yes, Holy Spirit. <laughs> All right, so... Um, if we, if we go from him, if we go from the Lord, if we go our own way, if we go from him, we're no longer connected from him. And then the result. Let me draw. All right. So here's the, the vine, and here we are. We're meant to be a branch. Isn't that beautiful? And we're meant to have his life flowing into us and then flowing out of us. But if we go our own way, what that means is we are choosing not Jesus as what he wants to be. Let's place him as a God on a, on a pedestal and worship him. Let's, you know, let's call him a golden calf and make one and say, well, it's gold, man. How could God be upset with that? God's not impressed with gold. So when we go away, we're not just going out to sin. We're leaving the source. All right. So once you get out of here, whatever you bring forth. Here's a little, here's a little weird. Whoops. 
whatever comes out of you then once you're separate, we call sin. There's another word for it. It's a very popular phrase. It's not just sin, it's separated fruit. I just made it up. <laughs> it is separated. It is fruit, all right, but it's not his fruit. It is separated from him action. Okay. Let's see, where are we at? Where are we at here? Okay, chapter 3 and verse 13. Now we're just continuing after verse 12. So we really haven't stopped. We just didn't do the last part of verse 12 because we're moving on. 13 through 18. Their throat is an open sepulcher with their tongue. Okay, what I wanted, oh, here's what I want you to do when we read this, okay? I want you, I want you to listen, not with what's wrong in terms of sin. I want you to listen with an ear and that would say, is that Jesus or the opposite of what Jesus would do? Okay, does everybody understand what I'm saying? I'm gonna read it. We usually just read this with sin. You know, it's just sin. Well, they sin, man. I don't know what's wrong with these people. They sin. I know what's wrong with them. They're separate from him who would bring forth a different kind of fruit. So listen to it now and see if it's not the exact opposite of Jesus, okay? Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues, they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursings, cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Do you see it? This is not Jesus. You, you, it's sin. That's sin. You're doing sin. No, you're doing not Jesus. You're doing not Jesus. Was well, that... You know, which is worse? I mean, we get, we get dull to the hearing. Well, that's, you know, this is sin or that's sin. And we go, okay, yeah. How about this is not Jesus' fruit? <laughs> this is not Jesus' fruit. This comes strictly for one reason and one reason alone because what does it say? Uh, in Ephesians when it starts talking about the mouth. Let your words be filled with grace and da 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 and it starts going through all of this kind of stuff. And it's life. And it comes only by oneness. And all of our attempts to duplicate it is only a copy of what is him. A copy of him in, in us, in me. I'm, I'm just, here, I'd like to give you a copy of Jesus. Is that him on that flat sheet of paper? Well, sort of. It's a copy. It's close. It's not close. It's a flat sheet of paper with some dark stuff on it. It's devoid of the one I love. It's devoid of the very one that I claim this is my life. I mean, you, get, you got to see it. You know, well, I'm a follower of Jesus. Well, wait a minute. Jesus put a few things in front of follower. Follower. Deny yourself. Take up your cross. Follow me. <laughs> you know, I'm a follower of Jesus. Have you denied yourself? No, I don't believe in that. Cha <laughs> well, we changed the image of the incorruptible God likened unto us. We're ch we say, well, those horrible people back in the Middle Ages or wherever, <laughs> you know what I mean? Back in some, it's got to be some other time period. It can't be in mine because they would think it's me. Um, so we, we, we put all that back. And we put it away. 
But to deny yourself is not. See, when they go, I don't want that. They don't know what they're denying. They're denying the one that they love. Or they're denying all the beauty that you saw at the cross, but I don't want that for me. Or any number of ways. In my heart, it's just flat out denying him. If he says deny yourself, and it's not just that, but if he says deny yourself, I say, I love you. I want to be with you. Folks, there are tons of movies where the girl meets this guy and falls in love, and he says, well, let's, you know, let's run away and go do so-and-so. And, you know, she goes, yes, I, why? I love you. And we go, oh, especially you girls. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> you know, whatever, I don't know what goes on in you. I don't think I'm giving a good representation of that at all. <laughs> yeah, you know, I have heard a little bit of that in theaters before, but not much. <laughs> but to deny yourself is to join with him. It's not deny yourself of things. I'm, okay, I don't, all right, I'll give up my CDs. Well, give them to me. That's what I always tell people. I mean, I do. I do. I do it all the time. People say, Pastor, I'm going to give up my CDs. I say, can you give them to me? Because <laughs> you know? he's not looking. He don't want your CDs. He doesn't even like that kind of music. He doesn't. There, he, let me tell you, the music, the eternal music of God, We've never heard yet. Everything's a shadow down here. My Lord. You know. So we go, well, can I keep my CDs in heaven? No. <laughs> because there's an identity to take with him. And when you take that identity, and you, you, I mean make it your identity. I mean make him. Not it, him. You make him. You say, Jesus, I want to conform to your image. Jesus, I want the cross to so work in me that when people look at me, they see you. Amen? Is that, is that so bad? That's right. Deny yourself? Yeah. Take up the cross? Well, why do I got to take up the cross? Well, that you, just because you said that. Because <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you just answered your own question. You know? <laughs> You know, I remember in Bible school, when I was in Bible school, this, I must have been a mess, all the stuff I said, too. But anyway, there was, this, there was this, this kid, and he was always talking about taking up the cross. And, uh, but he was always, you know, out of whack with what the Lord was doing at the time. And one day, you know, he was touting his soapbox, you know, and he's saying, yeah, Randy, you know, my hair is probably a little bit longer than it is now. Yeah, it was a lot longer. And uh, he said, he's, he said, yeah, man, I, you know, I've taken up my cross. And I said, brother, you, you need, you need to quit carrying that cross around, get up on it and die. <laughs> you know, <laughs> because he was just out of way. It's like, Ooh, look, you know, <laughs> <laughs> this makes up for everything. Here, I'll punch you in the nose. Oh, look. You know, sorry. <clears throat> All right, so we are, we are the opposite of him, or we're the opposite of oneness, or we're the opposite of um, the image of Christ change the image of the incorruptible God for one like us, one that fits us more. Um, we are the opposite of Jesus, my identity. We've got Jesus, my Savior. 
We got Jesus, my healer. We got Jesus, my helper. We got Jesus. And yes, he's all those things. And thank God. But let me tell you something. That satisfies you, but it doesn't satisfy him. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, Paul. Paul having to raise up fledgling churches and then correct them. He says to the Galatians, I travail in birth till Christ is formed in you. He's talking to church, churches, not just a church with church people. He's talking to churches in Galatia. That's a whole area. That's not just one little town like Ephesus or something. I travail in birth till Christ be formed in you. Meaning, you have an unformed Jesus. It'd be like a, a fetus. You know, and you're trying to tell, is it a boy or is it a girl? Is it, you know, this and that. We, you know, it's unformed. He hasn't been formed in you. He, you, you, you know he exists. I believe in God. And again, so does the devil and trembles. At least he trembles. You know. <laughs> That's one for the devil. <laughs> he don't get many, so that's one. Okay, you got to give it up. At least he trembles. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, he even appears as an angel of light. We rarely do that. <laughs> this thing's just, this is uh, degenerating fast here. Let's, uh, but I'm not ready to quit. I believe I can, I believe I can redeem this thing. I, I do. I think I can, <clears throat> at least the Lord can. Uh, let's go back to Romans 2, and uh, Romans 2, and I want to show you something because there, thank God there's hope, amen? I mean, there's, what, with all of these who don't know him and all of these who are going opposite of him and all of these that are willing to change, you know, his glory and change his truth for a lie, there are some that we find, and they're just, this first one's just sort of a mention and can go either way, but the next ones we'll see that are a little more clear. This is Romans chapter 2 and verse 14. <clears throat> but when the Gentiles, who have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves, and here it is. Verse 15, who show the work of the law written in their hearts, folks. This is something in their heart. This is not in their head, and this is not in their culture, and this is not in their religion, and this is not in, this is something of the heart to them. He is something of the heart to them. And then still in chapter 2, verse 26, Therefore, if the uncircumcision, who's the uncircumcision? Gentiles are not Jews, meaning they're not under law. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee who by the letter and circumcision, that meaning the outward, does transgress the law. Here it is, verse 28. For he is not a Jew who is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew who is one inwardly, and circumcision is of the what? of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, thank God whose praise would be of God and not of men. Right? Okay. Meaning, 
meaning, and, and I, I'll try to end with this, probably won't, but I'll try. Um, that much of, much of our religious approach is to please, you know, the pastor or to please the, the rules of the, the, of the Bible school or to please this or that and, and not to please God. Not to say, you know what, I love you. Not just, I'm going to stand before God so I'm going to please him. No. I love you and I'm going to know you and I'm going to know you by heart and spirit and I'm going to press into you and I'm going to seek your face, not just your hands. I'm going to get past, not just past, and you never get past because he's always, he's benevolent beyond words. But you look into the face from which the hands now reach out. That's why it says over here, or despisest thou the richness Riches and the goodness and forbearance and long suffering. Uh, despise that. Despise that? Not knowing the source of that gift or that touch or that blessing. Not seeing, not seeing the being of the doing. Not seeing the being of the doing. And maybe we, maybe we, oh, glory to God, I want to testify. You know, I want to tell you what God did for me. Good. Shout it out, baby. Shout it out. I'm for it. I am. I, I am for it. I, I enjoyed it a lot more in Jamaica when they did that. I mean, they were just, you know. I, I'd get ready to preach. I'm going to turn to so-and-so and somebody say, hold up, brother. i got to testify. You know, and they go off in their Jamaican accent and, and just go, I, you know, I want to give glory to God and his goodness to me. I want to tell you. And it was real. It wasn't, well, you know, God did this for me and that means I'm special. And God did that for me and that means I'm spiritual. No, it doesn't. It probably means you're still a, just a child and he's giving you stuff. Could be, could be, could be. Even if it's a little, could be. Okay. <clears throat> Thank God that with all of this that's been said thus far, there has been a lot that has just left him. But there is this little bit that he mentions. And he mentions it with a, it's like, <laughs> it's kind of like, Romans 1, you're reading through it, and oh, this is stench, my God, you know, and you're going on through. And then all of a sudden you come in, a little sweet savor comes up, you know, and then you get back to them, you know, and all the junk they're doing. They're, oh, there's another little sweet savor where somebody's heart has been drawn and somebody's eyes have been fixed and somebody's will has been mastered and somebody's love is, is being released and I mean what do you honestly what do you think of what do you think Jesus thinks of that <laughs> I mean hallelujah hallelujah and I don't know especially among charismatic spirit filled type Christians I don't know anybody that doesn't want that, but what if it were said of us? There's none that seeketh after God. And we would say, no, I'm seeking God. I'm reading the Bible, and, I'm, and every time I read it, I'm looking for that robed, long-haired, you know, guy on the throne. In other words, we're not seeking him because he's going, that's not me. That was me for, you know, 33 and a half years, and he died and now I'm a resurrected new man of which you are my members and you live and breathe by me and through me and we are one and we're joined and you ought to be happy about it. Amen. I mean, wouldn't that be right? He would say, and you ought to be happy about it. 
I mean, I often hear, in my head, I think I hear God go, my God. And I'm going, there's nobody else up there. <laughs> Who are you talking to? Oh, yeah, you got Jesus and the Holy Spirit. All right, we need to stop. Uh, take a break.